and people said Perla noise was difficult to make. At least anybody who's looked at an, a website on how to make Perla noise should say that because they're darn near impossible. But I'm going to be showing you that it's not actually that hard. We're going to be using the exact same structure and framework that we used in our value noise, but we're just going to be changing the way that we find the values of the corners. That's really all it is. So um, basically down below here is value noise, you can see here, and this is kind of a high frequency one octave look at it. You can see how it's kind of boxy. And this is because um, you're just using corners. So eventually when it leads up to that corner, it's just going to be that value, and it ends up looking kind of kind of boxy. But up here we have Perla noise, where it's uh, it's gradients, so it, it pushes the color. If you, if you don't, really, if you want to learn more about the difference, you can go and um, watch my video on it, it's on my channel. Uh, anyways. Let's get into the theoretical, how does it work? Let me go out of this. And here we go, let's, let's choose blue. Okay, so let's say we wanna find this dot right here. When we were using value noise, we just used the, the random uh, function to find a random value for these, these points here. But we don't wanna do that. Instead, what we wanna do for Perla noise is we use gradients. So what we're gonna do is we, we um, we create these random gradients, and typically they're in the diagonal directions. You can really make them wherever you like. But we'll just put them here like this. Sweet. So this is going to be called, let's just, I'll work with the top left point for now. We're just going to find, we're just going to use this. So um, this gradient right here has has a, has an X and a Y. And we always use scale of 1. So this, this gradient here is going to have an X of negative 1 because it's going back. And then it's going to have a y of negative 1 as well. So it has an x and a y of negative 1, 1. Ne negative 1, negative 1, excuse me. So this is going to be our first vector. We're going to call this d1. Okay, that's that. Now we're going to make uh, four more vectors, which are going to be called our distance vectors. And that's going to be the vector from the point here down to the dot that we're trying to find the color of. Right? So this is going to have a um, an x and a y. The x is going to be, uh, well, whatever. It'll be like 0.25, we'll say. So we'll just say 0.25, kind of rounding there, <laughs> estimating. And then a y of like negative 0.75. We'll just work with easy quarter numbers there. Okay, so this is going to be called our uh, distance 2. There. So we have two vectors. We have our gradient vector and we have our distance vector. That's what I should call it. So I should call this G1 for gradient 1. That's fine. Actually, that's really terrible. That's really terrible. There. Okay, so cool. We have two vectors. Now what we need to do is we need to find the dot product of these two vectors, which is simply taking the x's, multiplying them together, taking the y's, multiplying them together, and then adding those together. That's it. So um, thankfully, GameMaker actually has a built-in function for the dot product. So I, all we have to do is just go dot x1, y1, x2, y2. And that right there is going to return to us the value of this point. Excuse me. I'm kind of getting over uh, a cold. Anyways. That's going to give us the value of this point. And once we do that for all the corners of the points, or all the corners here, we now have the values. We can run through our same interpolation that we did in our value noise. Everything's the exact same, but magically, it looks a lot better. So, okay, let's get in here. I actually have the wrong one open. Let's get into our noise value here. Sweet, so this is where we left off. So this is what we need to change right here. We, we basically just, we find our corner zero and we give it a random range, negative one to one. Actually, excuse me here for a second, guys. All right, I'm sorry, okay. So this is what we need to change. We need, we need to not do a random range, right? We need to choose a random gradient. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this, um, we're gonna save corner zero, one, two, and three for the final value that we, that we get, okay? So we're just going to delete that for now, right? Oops, what did I do? 
just going to delete that. I'm just going to say uh, gradient one x equals. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just run a choose function, which is going to give us, which is going to give us, um, it's just going to choose at random whatever values we give here. So I want to choose between negative one and one because that's going to give us, that's going to give us diagonal gradients. That's it. So we want the gradient one x, and we also want the gradient one y. That's also going to be a negative one or one. And that's it. Now we just need to do this for our other three corners. Gradient two, oops, gradient three. Wait, um, I'm going to keep my naming scheme the same here. There. Okay, so now we have random uh, gradients for our corners. So now we need to find the distance vector. Okay, so to find the distance vector, what we're going to do is we're going to end up taking on um, the x position of the point we're trying to find, which is returned to us right here, x position and y position, right? So it's going to be x position. So if you think about it, like for um, for our gradient zero here, gradient zero x, this corner right here, let me just refresh this. So for this corner here, if our expositions here, we want to take, we want to find this vector here. We know the x should be positive. So we want to take the x position here and subtract, subtract this position here. That's going to give us that. So we're going to take the x position and subtract that left corner point. So that is going to be our x minimum. I didn't do that right. No, I didn't spell this right. Okay, let's just call this uh, distance one equals. This is going to be distance one x equals that, and then distance one y is going to be the y position and the y minimum. It's going to be the y position. We're subtracting the y minimum. That's going to give us. The y value of our of our uh, uh, should be zero. I keep getting my naming things wrong. Okay. So we want to do we want to change it up though for our other ones because otherwise we're going to get the wrong values. We want them to be negative or positive accordingly. So like for example, if we're trying to find this point here, this gradient should be negative x, right? See, so we're finding this one. The x is positive. But this one right here, the x is negative. So for this one right here, we want to take the x maximum and subtract that right there from the uh, the x position, and that's going to give us the negative x. So we'll take for our distance one here, x position minus x maximum, and then our y position minus well, still the y minimum. It's uh, still the same y there as the, as the left one, but now for down here, it's going to be y maximum for sure, and. Uh, this one right here is going to be the, it's the same as here, the x's. So it's going to be the x minimum. This is going to be the y maximum and x maximum. So this right here is going to be the x minimum, same as that. So this is going to be y max. And this one right here, both of them are going to be the max. Cool. So that should be our distance vectors. So now all we have to do is find the values here to put in here for our corner zero and our corner one. So like I said before, let's just put in our dot function here, dot product. There we go, x1, y1, x2, y2. So the first dot product we're going to find is the uh, the corner zero there. So that's going to be uh, distance zero x and distance zero y. And it's going to be gradient zero x and gradient zero y. OK. Now for corner one, it's going to be distance zero one distance one, gradient one, and gradient one. For corner two, it's going to be two, 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 and two. And then for corner three, it's going to be three, 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 and three. Okay, so we're finding the dot product of the top left corner, the dot product of the top right corner, the dot product of the lower left corner, and the dot product of the lower right corner. We're linear interpreting, interpolating between all of them then. Those are our values for our corners. Besides that, we're going through our exact same stuff that we went through for our value noise. So if this is like really complicated, just go watch the value noise um, uh, tutorials I have. But 
it's really the same structure and uh, this is really all that makes it purlin and I mean, it's not okay. It's not truly Perlin because we're, we're just using a choose function here to choose between negative one and one. Uh, Ken Perlin actually uses an array of 256 integers um, between zero and 255. Those are eight bit integers, and that's important because uh, the, the, uh, the bits equate into the vector that you're using and he, kind of stuff like that. But um, this works. It basically, his way is faster, but we don't have a way to really mess with the bits of our numbers. So we're just going to go with with choose negative one or one for simplicity reasons it works the exact same and it's even better because it doesn't repeat um, his does it repeats every 256 cycles I guess so this doesn't at least so that's good but um that should be it so I probably messed something up and you're probably looking at me like what the heck didn't he do but that's all right let's uh, let's run this and give it a shot and uh, hopefully it'll work so That is an awfully large screen, but it appears to be working. Let's lower this here. Let's go 600 by 600, so it'll it'll go faster. Cool, and there we have some Perlin noise. See, it's really not that hard. You just use the gradients, the distance vectors, find the dot product, and that's the value of your point. Awesome. Sweet. So let's change some stuff here. Let's go into my object here. We can change our octaves, which is right now set to, set to 5. Let's just set that to like 2, and then maybe a frequency of, I don't know, let's go 4. Make it a little more, a little more uh, frequent there. Smaller scale. Awesome. That's exactly how uh, how Perlin noise should look. So it's super easy. I hopefully I went into everything with enough detail, but uh, this is really just taking the value noise and making it Perlin. So go watch my my value noise and uh, come back here and watch this if you're lost. But it's um it's pretty easy. So this is our this is our bot drawing the 2D stuff. If you guys just want the code and nothing else. I'll just give you the script down below. Go ahead and go down there and you guys can find it if you just want to use this. Not a problem. You're free to use it for whatever you like. Um, you don't need my permission or anything like that. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed. Um, hopefully, again, it all makes sense. So, you guys take care. See you later.